Thank you so, I'm so glad you're here today. You have a doctorate in chemical engineering. Uh, it's my understanding that most natural gas pipelines, and we talked about them, are not equipped to ship blends of methane and hydrogen where the hydrogen component is greater than 20 percent. Could you please explain to all of us how a conventional natural gas pipeline differs from a pipeline which is capable of shifting blends with more than 20 percent hydrogen? Sure. Thank you for the question, Senator Barrasso. So, um, Hydrogen being such a small molecule and corrosive can create, uh, create cracks and, and attack um, imperfections. Our stimulus checks going to be sent out immediately. I know many of you are wondering what's the status for a fourth round of stimulus payments. Well, new information has just been released, everybody. I know many of you are hoping for another round of enhanced child tax credit law this year passed by congressional lawmakers. However, you might live in one of the many states making plans to send money, more money to families between this year and 2023. The last monthly child tax credit payment was dispersed in December, with a final check arriving after parents filed their tax returns this year. There is a Republican Senate proposal that would send up to $350 per child and includes a work requirement. The proposal for Mitt Romney will restart monthly payments for millions of people. But unlike previous stimulus efforts, Romney's plan, which is officially known as the Family Security Act, could put the work requirements in place for millions of recipients. The Family Security Act will provide monthly benefits of up to $350 a month for families with children 0 to 5 and $250 per month to those with children ages 6 to 17. The maximum monthly payment for families would be $1,250 and expectant parents would be able to apply for benefits to begin four months prior to the child's due date. In a statement, Romney said his act creates a new national commitment to American families by modernizing and streamlining antiquated federal policies. The biggest element of Romney's plan is the inclusion of work requirements for payment recipients. Details on the exact requirements were not included in the plan, but a common threshold for a state-level benefit is 80 hours a week a month or a comparable amount of job training or volunteer change. They do it with these stamp size computers powered by Bluetooth and attached to any product or packaging, from vaccines. It allows us to measure the temperature, uh, the location, the authenticity. To zucchinis. Each zucchini that goes into a crate joins a unique monitoring path. Smart crates monitoring everything moving from farm to fork. Williot is working with label giant Avery Dennison, which is manufacturing millions of these tags and connecting them to the cloud so they can be tracked anywhere. Now, a new budget model indicates the White House $10,000 student loan handout will add $330 billion to the deficit. The figure is significantly more than the $305 billion the budget office estimates will be cut from the deficit over the next decade. That is because on the new Inflation Reduction Act, which, recently, which was signed into law, the president of nonpartisan committee for responsible for the budget told reporters that the president repeatedly talked about how much he cared about reducing the deficit, and they may now wipe out the amount of deficit reduction in a matter of minutes with a stroke of a pen. Early today, Biden announced plans to cancel $10,000 for borrowers, making 125 grand annually. Pell Grant recipients will receive $20,000 in debt cancellation, provided their income is below $125,000 threshold. Education Secretary Miguel Cardona shared his thoughts on the issue. He said earning a college degree or certificate should give every person in America a leg up, securing a bright future, but for too many people, student loan debt hindered their ability to achieve their dreams, including buying a home, starting a business, or providing for their family. It is unclear if the federal government will seek to offset the canceled debt. This is a move likely impossible without congressional approval. According to the Treasury Department, as of February, the national debt stood at more than $30 trillion. The federal budget deficit, meanwhile, stood at $727 billion as the end of July. The White House's decision will only impact individuals with federal student loans of the more than $1.7 trillion owed in student debt nationally. The IRS has released a new announcement in regards to future relief payments. Now, the IRS will refund about a billion dollars in penalties to 1.6 million individuals and business taxpayers who are not fined or for not filing their taxes or information returns on time for 2019 and 2020. The penalty relief detailed hyperbole matched the chair of the powerful subcommittee that controls the funding for public safety. He knows what it means investing in effective and accountable community policing that builds public trust and strengthens public safety. I'm old enough to remember when cops used to walk the beat in Wilmington and in Scranton because they knew everybody. They knew the kid. They knew if something was trouble, they knew whose house to go and knock on the door. There are new eligibility requirements that lawmakers have agreed on. The new requirements have to be met by Americans in order to be further eligible for stimulus checks. Here is some big news. 
Residents of 13 states who received debt forgiveness from the federal government for their student loans may need to pay some state taxes on their forgiven amount. And according to analysis by the Tax Foundation, loan forgiveness is generally considered to be equivalent to income and is therefore taxable. Analysts have said that the American Rescue Plan, the $1.9 trillion package that Joe Biden signed to law, exempts the forgiveness of student loan debt from 2021 to 2025 from federal income taxes. States that follow the federal give States that follow the federal government's lead will exclude debt forgiveness, but not all states do. Biden has already announced the federal government will forgive up to $10,000 in student debt for individuals making less than $125,000 per year and up to $20,000 for those who received a Pell Grant, meant for students with the largest financial need. The states where residents may need to pay taxes on the forgiven debt are Arkansas, Minnesota, Hawaii, Kentucky, Massachusetts, New York, and just to name a few, South Carolina. Experts have also calculated the highest rates that anyone could potentially pay in each of these states for having $10,000 forgiven. All of these states could require residents to pay several hundred dollars in state taxes on the up to $10,000 in forgiven debt. Hawaii residents, for example, could potentially have the highest tax liability at $1,100. The taxes would be higher for residents who receive $20,000 in forgiveness. States will likely have, have to issue guidance in the well above the state's current minimum of Fifteen fifty an hour. CBC's Kate Rogers live in San Francisco. This would be a big win for fast food workers, looks like. That's right, Chap. Advocates say the bill's passing is a major win for workers that will improve the industry's conditions in a meaningful and sweeping manner if signed into law. It comes at a time when organized labor has been successful across the food sector from Starbucks to Chipotle and Trader Joe's. Fast food chains are notoriously difficult to organize due to high turnover and franchisee ownership. Now, according to officials in San Antonio, Texas, you, they will be considered a proposal to use $50 million of revenue from the city owned utility to provide rebates to customers. Energy bills have soared for people in Texas in recent months as record-breaking heat forced them to use more electric. As a result, the city's revenue from CPS Energy is expected to be $75 million higher than expected. The city manager, Eric Walsh, said the city collects 13% of revenue that the utility brings in. The credit will be based on the customer's July bill, with the proposal suggesting the credit reduced from the future bill should be around 13% of what was paid in July. Walsh said the average bill for residential customers rose to $230 in July, meaning they could expect a rebate of about $31. Walsh also told reporters, this is not going to wipe away anybody's outstanding balances. It's not going to pay anybody's complete utility bill. It is the city, it is the city as the owner of CPS recognizing the extraordinary position that everyone finds themselves in and doing our part. Now, Illinois representatives have also co-sponsored a bill to Brother America to give Americans with monthly rebate checks, help them defray the escalating cost of gas, with the windfall profit tax being levied against oil companies. According to the, according to the Stop Gas Price Gouging Tax,